Hey guys, it's Miraline, Delicious Delights, and welcome to my channel. Today I would just want to do a chit chat video and I want to discuss the different types of frag heads <laughs> that there are. I guess there's frag heads, I've heard perfume heads, I've heard perfumistas, perfumistos. Um, yeah, I think those are the only ones I've heard, but today I'm just going to use frag heads. That's probably the most popular one. So what is a frag head? It's basically someone who loves fragrance and that's basically what it is. And yeah, I think that there are some types of frag heads that exist and maybe some of you can relate <laughs> or put yourself in some of these categories. I have five categories that I thought up of. There's probably more that I'm missing, but I think these ones are probably um, the most, for me, the most um, popular, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so let's begin. Okay. So number one uh, is the collector. How many of you out there love fragrance because you like collecting things. I do find I do find that my glasses are fogging up because it's hot in here. I'm sorry. I do find that people who are collectors of perfume, they're also collecting other things like typically watches, shoes, bags, makeup, clothing. There's a lot of other things, the bottle caps, <laughs> whatever it is. Um, do you consider yourself a collector? And I guess with collecting, that would also include people who, of course, they buy fragrance because they like it, but maybe the like hardcore serious collector is one who wants to have the entire set or the entire house of something because they want to have they want to collect all of the perfumes in that collection or house or something. So specifically, I'm thinking of Tom Ford private blends where they're just so cute lined up together. And then as a set, it just looks so adorable. Um, Amouage uh, library collection has different volumes, like volume one, two, three, up until I think 11 or maybe more. Um, that's the kind of thing. I guess you can also collect Frederick Mall bottles because they're really nice lined up. So yeah, oh, there's a lot of other ones like Black Opium where they have limited edition bottles, the same perfume just in different bottles and like they have Christmas edition and like Valentine's edition or whatever. <laughs> and there's um, the Good Girl from Carolina Herrera, the, uh, what's it called? Uh, I don't even know what it's called, the high heel. <laughs> Uh, there's just so many, La Vie Belle, Flower Bomb, there's so many collectible bottles. So for me personally, I think that I can kind of relate to the collector. Uh, for me, the most important thing is just having perfumes that I like, but with one collection in particular, I do kind of want to have them all. <laughs> even if I don't really like the perfume, even if it doesn't work on me, I just want to have it because it's part of the collection. And this collection is the Hypnotic, Hypnotic Poison Collection from Dior. I happen to have here. This is my, I'm sorry about the glasses, I'm just going to take them off. It's just going to bother me. All right, so I have Dior Hypnotic Poison, the EDT, one of my favorites of all time, my favorite women's designer fragrance for sure. But then after this, there's the Eau de Parfum version, which is so gorgeous as well, kind of underrated, I think. And um, it's basically uh, a black licorice added to this, but they made it darker and kind of more mysterious kind of. <laughs> and then there's two other ones here that I have that are discontinued. We have the Eau Sensuelle version, which is kind of like a lighter version of the EDT. Uh, more floral, easier to wear, more versatile, but it still has that hypnotic poison DNA in it. And then finally, we have the Eau Secret version. This is my least favorite. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't wear it that much, but it's all right. It's like a more citrusy version. Um, I own it because I wanted it to be in this collection because I kind of do collect them. Um, there's some other versions of this that I want, um, but they're hard to find. And if I, if I do find them, then they're like super like expensive. <laughs> but yes, I do collect these hypnotic ones, hypnotic poison perfumes. But for the rest of my collection, I don't really care. I'm not really like brand loyal 
to any house or anything like that but um, yeah I just want to have a mix of everything but this collection in particular is one that I would like. You know I just remembered the portraits collection from Penhaligans which is so beautiful with the animal animal caps it's so nice and <laughs> that's a really a nice one to collect so number one collector are you a collector <laughs> all right so the second type of frag head is one who is one who appreciates the art of perfume um, you know someone who really finds it important to know about the perfumer maybe the backstory behind the perfume there's always in the press releases there a lot of times there's like a lot of more a lot more information about the perfume and maybe how it was created and why it was created and i guess the motivations be uh, behind the nose the scent all that stuff so the artsy type <laughs> so are you an artsy type of frag head do you like the art of it maybe i can even include the art of even the bottle designs and i have here Something that's really interesting, <laughs> uh, this is Coco Rico, sorry, from Jean-Paul Gaultier, which is very fitting for this video because this is a uh, shape of a head, like a silhouette, you can see, it's not really showing, there you go, and yeah, <laughs> if you turn it to the side, you can also see the side profile of the torso of, you know, you know those um, Le Mal, Jean-Paul Gaultier, Le Mal bottles, Le Mal, <laughs> uh, kind of see that here. And then it's a shape of a head. So yeah, this in itself is an art piece and the perfume is discontinued, unfortunately, but um, I, rec I actually really like how it smells as well. And I find this to be very, very artsy and I really like that. Another perfume that I find to be very artsy is Tank Battle from the house of Lush. <laughs> so this one is inspired by the works of Banksy, who is a street artist, anonymous, very popular. I went to the Banksy Museum in um, Amsterdam. Oh, it's called the Moko Museum, but they had this exhibition or a big, um, yeah, exhibition, I guess, of lots of Banksy stuff. And it was really cool to go. And yeah, Tank Battle smells like, it's such a weird fragrance. It's it's like uh, a dirty patchouli, almost like the scent of dirt itself. But they also sweetened it with um, bubble gum, like a sweet, bubblicious. And it's it's so cool. It's It's weird, yes, <laughs> and very, artistic for sure. Not for everyone, but I do really appreciate um, this fragrance. There's a whole backstory about how this was, um, what, how and why it was created. But Banksy was inspiration and it's it smells good to me too. Also very green too as well. Kind of like a wet rainforest floor with the soil and the earth. And then this just really cool note of bubble gum, like the pink bubblicious. So you're walking through that jungle and then you're chewing like a big, uh, you're chewing a lot of uh, bubble gum and then blowing bubbles and you smell all of that together is what this is. So yeah, I really appreciate this because of the art behind it. It's very artistic, very cool. And yeah, are you one that appreciates the arts of fragrance? Probably. Now let's move on to the third type of frag head. And that is one who wears fragrance or who enjoys fragrance because of the nostalgia, because of the memories that fragrance gives to them. So we all know that fragrance really does connect with us. At least I'll just speak for myself. When I smell a certain fragrance, sometimes it can bring me back to my past. It reminds me of certain events, a time period in my life, uh, certain people, like that connection. That connection is so strong and so emotional and so accurate. You know what I mean? Like when I smell something, I can just like rewind my life <laughs> how many years and just put myself back into that 
situation and I think that's such a cool thing with fragrance you guys for me it doesn't happen all the time <laughs> with fragrances but there are fragrances that I have smelled that I own as well that just make me feel like I'm young again <laughs> I'm for I'm almost 41 you guys uh, but yeah there are fragrances that can take me back to high school for example and reminding me of all those like really fun times so many things, so many great memories, maybe even some bad memories. And I just, I just love that whole aspect of fragrance. Um, just emotionally connecting to a perfume and then, you know, that's just so cool. <laughs> so let's see here. I have two fragrances here that I am very emotionally connected to. These ones give me such good memories and they just make me feel all giddy and... Yeah, it's just amazing how it does that. So let me just tell you guys what it is. This is CK1 from Calvin Klein. So this was a big time 90s perfume. <laughs> See, honestly, when I smell this, I am reminded of high school. This was like the perfume to wear in high school. It reminds me of the guy that I had my first kiss with because he wore this and I just can remember it so clearly. Um, a lot of people wore this in, this in the hallways of my high school and I wanted it, couldn't afford it. My mom got me a dupe of it, <laughs> which was fine enough. But yeah, this is just such a great fragrance to take me back into time and think of those days in high school when you know, when you think you're invincible, you just do some crazy things and you're just having so much fun and you don't really have any stress. Um, and just having fun with your friends, going out, exploring, adventuring, being a bit crazy, getting in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> That's what this fragrance does to me when I smell it. It takes me back to the 90s, which is a great time period, <laughs> not only for because I was younger and just more carefree, but I loved the music of the 90s. I loved the fashion. It's just super cool. And this is a super cool fragrance. So this one is very special to me. Another fragrance that takes me back is my wedding scent. And this one is called Juicy Couture. This is just a regular Juicy Couture. I just think it's called Juicy Couture by Juicy Couture. <laughs> so this one I do want to spray. This is my favorite from this whole entire house. Oh, the, the charms are getting in the way. Yeah, okay. So this is a beautiful floral scent. Mix of florals. Tuberose is the most prominent. And also there's like sweet caramel in here too, making it sweet and kind of gourmand, like a floral gourmand. And I wore this on my wedding day. So when I smell this, I'm taken back once again. It was a beautiful day. No problems, there weren't, wasn't any drama or anything like that. It just a day that went by so smoothly. And I just remember smelling this and I'm wearing that dress. <laughs> Big, white, fluffy dress. And it's just so, so cool how that's all it takes. A sniff of this and uh, that, yeah, it brings me back to that day, which was a wonderful day and so much fun. So yeah, that's another reason why I love perfume, as I said. This is the biggest, for me, for me, this is the reason why I love perfume so much. This is the number one reason. Of course, I can relate to the other ones, the collector or the arts thing, but nostalgia, memories is my thing. This is my my heart in a bottle, I guess, <laughs> or my life in a bottle. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the fourth type of frag head. Okay, so this type of frag head is just someone who wants to wear perfume, who wants to just finish off an outfit, I guess. Someone who 
wants to feel put together with a fragrance, someone who just simply wants to smell good. And so there are some people that will get dressed up and they have their whole routine. And then, you know, after they're all dressed up, have their hair done, makeup done, clothes, everything's on point. Then they spray on a fragrance and that kind of just put things, puts things all together and rounds it out, I guess. <laughs> I guess seeing perfume as an accessory um, to your overall look I guess <laughs> and for me I have two perfumes here that I tend to grab sorry just when I really don't know what to wear but I know I want to smell good and I want to feel good you know and th the first one here is Alien Fusion from the House of Mugler which is a great everyday versatile scent this is my favorite of the alien collection the, the regular alien gives me a headache i get like a allergic reaction to it unfortunately <laughs> but this version i can wear and it's just fantastic it just really does puts makes me feel put together and it's a great accessory to wear after you know getting dressed up and leaving the house beautiful spicy floral tube rose i'm not sure if there's jasmine in here but it does have that signature alien DNA which is fantastic but for me it's more sweet spicy and not headache inducing so that's one of them that I see as an accessory another one that I really like to wear when I don't really know what to wear <laughs> but it seems to just go with every single outfit is Angel Eau Sucre I haven't talked a lot about this recently but I have in the past and I still really love it you guys this is a beautiful angel flanker and I do want to spray this one yeah oh my gosh sweet gourmand creamy red fruits delicious such a yummy dessert Kind of like a raspberry sorbet, very creamy. Oh, it's so good. And when I wear this, I just feel, I feel good. And it makes me feel like my outfit looks better or I look better <laughs> when I spray this. So that's the fourth type of frag head. One who sees perfume as an accessory to their outfit. Okay, so uh, let me know what type of frag head you are one of these or all of them. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.